Okay, so once again, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, effective youth development uh, programs. And uh, as I mentioned before, it's, it's not, uh, let's say, a matter of one, one hour. So, so just um, maybe I'll start from very practical uh, stuff. Uh, I will share this, uh, this presentation and also this information uh, through uh, Rolandas. Uh, so if, if anybody wish to have access to, to all this methodical, uh, let's say, information, uh, uh, methodical uh, books, uh, e-books, uh, electronic books. So, so, so Rolandas will, will share this, um, uh, you know, Information, but in general, if we want to start some regional uh, basketball development, we start from a methodical center. So we, we call it a, a competence center where all coaches and, and uh, other, let's say, basketball uh, per persons can, can come and get knowledge from, from education. So Lithuania, most probably a single uh, country in the world that delivers uh, basketball coach education through universities, uh, just specifically through universities, because by law in Lithuania, you cannot work in basketball in, in any kind of sport if you don't have bachelor degree. So, so that's why I believe that Lithuanian basketball coaches are one of the most advanced in, 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 in the world, and, and this is the key, key, key reason, the main reason why Lithuanian basketball is successful, because we have really well-educated uh, coaches. Uh, is it too high requirement? Uh, in Europe, you, you will not find uh, many countries uh, where requirements uh, are to have minimally to have uh, you know, a uh, bachelor degree in, in, in specific sport. So, so now we have three universities delivering, uh, uh, delivering a ba bachelor degree in basketball coaching, specifically in basketball specialization. We, we just opened it in Klaipeda, the third one. But uh, 10 years ago, we had four. Uh, one was, uh, another one was in, in, in um, uh, Shaule University, and we, we, we're gonna rebuild it as well. So, so four universities just for small country, and that's why I, I, I asked uh, just uh, for, for, for the coach what, are you, what kind of curriculums you have in this university. So, so he mentioned it four, but it's, it's more general, uh, let's say psychology, uh, so, some, some other, let's say nutrition, but not coaching. But we, we, we start from coaching because we think that uh, the main person in, in the sport is, is coach. And the same is ba in basketball. As famous coach Garasta says, if you don't have coach, you don't need president, secretary, generalist, you don't need anyone because uh, without coach, nothing happened. So, so that's why we, we pay uh, quite much attention to the uh, coach education. And one of the methodical, uh, let's say, mat materi materials, uh, material, uh, what I want to share is, is we have this uh, kind of IBU university. It's a virtual, let's say, coaching education, online coach education. And uh, just uh, strictly jump uh, to the very, uh, let's say, very, very clear information. You can find here uh, how we teach students uh, for long-term uh, basketball players development plan. We'll talk about uh, more general uh, stuff, but not to be only theoretical. So here, uh, here you can find uh, basically 12 years uh, plans. If, as you can see, uh, for instance, uh, content of annual training plans for 10 years old basketball players. It's fall, winter period, September first week, uh, second. And here you have technical uh, skills or tactical, uh, let's say, uh, some kind of elements and, and also physical, uh, so like spe special physical preparation, uh, physical abilities. And here minutes, how much time you should regard of, for developing uh, every single, uh, let's say, technical action on, or, or, or tactical, uh, let's say, element. So, so um, I'll give it uh, for you, especially for Lithuanian coaches, uh, I will share uh, the latest methodical uh, book, what we have, and uh, yeah, you easy can 
can translate if someone wants uh, to get it. It's in Word, so in Word documents, so you can put to Google Translator and it's, it's quite precise. Of course, it's much wider uh, information. Uh, as you can see, uh, 200 uh, more uh, pages. And, and this is the latest, our methodical publication uh, for uh, local coaches education. So calmly, you can read, and, and uh, anytime we can connect with Professor Polauskas, who is the author of that, and, and myself. So, so, so this uh, what I will will share immediately. And now, uh, maybe I wanna I wanna talk uh, more general, more theoretical, and, and just uh, how we are analyzing our our performances and uh, how we understand that we are on the good track uh, that. Uh, Lithuanian basketball going uh, going right way. So this is national basketball program, and uh, as I mentioned before, basically when we uh, talking about uh, effective youth basketball uh, programs, we should uh, count and, and analyze in three different dim dimension: is the, the the lower dimension, a single club performance, uh, and then the, the regional, and and then the national, and, and all these. Uh, levels should be uh, should have synergy and and also balance. So so what we have um, second uh, first of all, of course, we always observing the ratings. Uh, we have three four criteria how how we are relating. So so first ratings and in in the ratings yes we are not in the men uh, best five but uh, soon we will be back. Now we are. Uh, seventh in the world. Uh, for women, we have issues, uh, very honestly. We have issues, we are solving, we are investing a lot of money, t uh, energy, and, and, and you know, uh, time for developing. We're establishing uh, girls' centers in, in basketball, in, in Lithuania, in, in Druskinike, our, our Lithuanian colleagues know. Uh, so, so for boys, we are fifth now, but uh, our, our task in, in two, three years to be in, in the best three. Ten years ago, we, we were uh, second, USA and, and, and Lithuania. But, but this is on the way, because last summer was uh, second best successful summer in, in our history. We, we got really great, uh, I mean, performance, uh, medals and so on. And for girls, uh, you know, we, we found one super talent and we got nice generation, very good generation, uh, born uh, uh, now, now under 16, uh, and, and uh, this year they will play, uh, sorry, they started under 16, the, 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 they won one medal, gold medal last year under 18, and the two, this year will play under 19. So one generation lift us to the seventh place in the world. You cannot see that, but if you check uh, FIBA rating, so you, you, you can see. Yeah, so the, the first index. The second index, what we uh, always observe, it's, it's uh, how many players we delegate to the NBA or sending to the, 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 the strongest uh, basketball league. And here uh, you can see other, uh, let's say, countries and other continents. So, so Lithuania 12 uh, with this population uh, is, is, is really good indice. We, we, we look into other, uh, let's say, uh, other uh, countries and, and always updating this uh, because NBA as, as a the final destination for uh, uh, players' career. Uh, it's nothing better. So you can, and a lot of scouts, a lot of experts trying to evaluate players and so on. So we are observing this in this as well. And, and, and the third is, is of also we are uh, counting um, right, FIBA world ratings by population. So if you, if you take Lithuania and especially men's boys, uh, so, so Lithuania, without any doubts, uh, basically first uh, in, in, in both categories. So, so we see that uh, we can, let's say, acknowledge that uh, Lithuanian uh, system is really strong and is stable for, for, for a year. It's, it's not occasionally one, one, one year, but stably we are, we are one of the leaders, I can say. By the way, Spain, Spain now we overcome USA, which is nice, but... Uh, 
Okay, we have a lot of Lithuanians here. Uh, we have a lot of offers uh, to make a naturalization of, of foreign players and so on, but our community, local community, would not understand this. Okay, we, we have a lack of some position, but if we take uh, pure foreigner, uh, let's say American or so on, so we would lose our identity, we think so. Uh, so, so that's why we are protecting. From this, we have Brazdekis, who was born in Lithuania. He went to States and played for Canada. So we had to naturalize this. So he's using this one uh, spot in the national team, but he's not foreigner. We are not counting. He's uh, pretty well speaking in Lithuania. His parents are Lithuanians and so on. We are looking a lot of, uh, for, for a lot of talents uh, in, in our immigrant families, by the way, in, in States especially. And you know, uh, next year, uh, most probably the number one pick in NBA, Matas Buzialis. He he's, 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 was born in Lithuanian family in States, but he has a Lithuanian passport and his father works for national team in Lithuania. So, so yeah, we are trying to look uh, new talents coming to Lithuania and we, are, we, we found, we have found, especially uh, successfully last year, for instance, we won gold medal in under 16, uh, under 16 boys. So MVP of all Eurobasket and the 16 was uh, Indrushaitis, who, who was uh, Lithuanian American. He was uh, born in, in, in America. So, so this way we, we are trying to find talents. And, and by the way, we have very promising uh, girls in, 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 in this region as well. So main reason of our success are four in general on, on what pillars build Lithuanian basketball general popularity of the sport. Uh, of course, we have victories. We, we have really exceptional uh, attention of the government, huge media coverage, of course, number one kind of uh, sport and so on. The, the most important is well-organized uh, training process because, uh, and we can see a lot of similarities with North Island because you are a small country comparing with others. So the same as Lithuania, more or less the same size, I believe, because to go from one side to, to another, it's uh, three, four hours. And uh, this is advantage, big advantage for Lithuania because in, in two hours drive, you can find maybe 50 different opponents you know, to play. Uh, we have strong basketball science, methodical centers, uh, knowledge center. And uh, yeah, it's constantly, let's say, ongoing process because uh, you know, we, we have PhD writing uh, and uh, doing research about basketball and, 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 and professors and so on. Uh, good local competitional system, of course. Okay, productive management system, general management system of, of, of basketball federation. All uh, members are involved into the management, and that's why we want uh, uh, Northern Ireland community to be part of our uh, basketball uh, federation as a member with voting right with opinion, with, with advices, and so on. So uh, we just uh, agreed with uh, Rolandas. He will establish an organization, legal entity, because to become a, a basketball federation member, you, you must be a legal entity. And uh, yeah, small countries advantage. See, system based on autonomic organization, association. So uh, only two uh, federations in the world managed in this way. It's USA and Lithuania. Uh, we, we don't uh, have uh, any uh, responsibilities, let's say direct responsibilities inside the federation to run leagues, uh, coaches or referees association and seniors. We, we just kind of, you know, uh, making agreement with a separate organization, let's say uh, youth uh, basketball league is a separate company. Uh, so we are signing, uh, giving rights to organize a specific championship and they, they do. And also they delegate as a, as a member to our board. And the board is the main body, governing body uh, uh, for, for, for the federation. So you see, we, we don't have, let's say, centralized uh, management. It's purely decentralized management, which makes ecosystem very strong. With, with, with a lot of strong, uh, you know, uh, companies, with our presidents, with, with business uh, uh, attraction and, and so on. And, of course, selection. The most uh, talented kids coming to basketball. Uh, I'll, I'll show more information about basketball school and so on. This is just for your uh, imagination, our popularity of basketball. And you see football is second and all the TV ratings uh, every year, the highest 
So of course, it's, it's not one day uh, or, or even one year or, or, or 10 years, uh, let's say, result. It's, it's 100 year result. And, and this is, uh, you know, uh, just uh, maybe good to understand. This. Okay, we have basketball structure for men's competition. And this is the most important uh, for youth basketball development is our youth league. Uh, we have over uh, 370 uh, boys team, uh, around 90 uh, girls team, and we have championship from, from under 10 to under 18 and, and, and still looking, you know, for uh, improvement and, and in, in increasing. Okay, here is structure of uh, our uh, youth basketball organization. So state sector and private sector in, in state sector, in state sector, in, in every single municipality, we have 60 municipalities. So they have a basketball school or basketball center called, uh, financed by municipality. And uh, around 10 private, uh, 10 private schools. So, so uh, yeah, private schools now uh, having better and better condition to grow because we have a sponsorship from every, municipality as informal learning, uh, 25 euros. Uh, so if you attract uh, any kid, you register it. So you, every month you get 25 euros from the municipality. And also uh, usually parents pay also around 30 up to 50. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's becoming self-sustainable kind of business, social business, but, but anyway, you can, you can run it. Okay, so we will talk about more theoretical uh, part of this presentation. It's integrating long-term uh, athletic development models. And um, I, just, I don't want to be, it's, it's boring, but it's theory which must be understood, uh, thinking about uh, uh, effective youth basketball uh, program. And, and yeah, we will cover these uh, topics very uh, quickly. So, yeah, in, in, in recent years, uh, there's been uh, growing interest on long-term athletic uh, development uh, models, and uh, mainly there are uh, three models, uh, generally proved scientifically, let's say, and used uh, practically. So I'll, I'll, I will, I will uh, just uh, go through, uh, through that. And uh, so mainly two models were presented its development model of sport participation, DMSP, and uh, long-term athletes development uh, model uh, popularized also by, by, by uh, Bali and Hamilton. And also the third one, youth physical development model, but basically it's all three models about the same. How to reveal the best uh, uh, possibilities, physical and, and technical possibilities of, of every player. Uh, depending on, on different factors, on, on div different indicators. So, so here you can see uh, the first model, the MSP, based on chronological age. So you, 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 can, see, uh, uh, you can see three different uh, periods, uh, 6 to 13, 13 to 15, and, and plus uh, 15 years. And, and basically there are two uh, ways, is early specialization, uh, which we have in Lithuania. Uh, in general, European uh, sports are based on early specialization model. And if you take American, Australian, uh, it's, it's more, let's say, sampling and, and uh, uh, let's say, late specialization. Uh, so early specialization when you start playing a specific sport uh, very early. And then even uh, this weekend we have kindergartens championship in Lithuania. So kids four, five years playing basketball already, competing and so on. And this is early specialization. You can have, especially scientifically proved, a lot of disadvantages of, of that model because it's, uh, I mean, a liability to the, to the injuries later. And uh, when you talk about longevity in sport, uh, so, so it's, it's really, uh, let's say, you are not preparing your body in the way you should. Uh, in, in terms of physical preparation, athleticism, and so on, but you gaining quickly technical actions, let's say, uh, like specialization and so on, and you start. And, and in Lithuania, in Spain, in, in, in many countries in Europe, uh, this model exists. And you know, since Spain now first in the world, you can say uh, all, all good, but. Uh, 
but uh, on the other side, uh, on the other side, you, you, no one knows if, if Spain or Lithuania would would keep this, uh, you know, sampling uh, model uh, or, or long-term satellite developing model. So, so we, so that's why we are educating coaches. And coach is creator, and coach should decide uh, by himself which, uh, let's say. Criteria he is choosing because these freak models have uh, different criteria. So one chrono chronological age, LTAD model it's growth rate, and uh, you know uh, my my PG was uh, about uh, optimization of physical load. So so I took uh, 16 years old uh, guys and I made uh, testing for one and another, and for instance uh, push-ups or or. Let's say uh, sit-ups. Uh, one guy during testing, 30 seconds he make like 50 or 45 sit-ups, and another uh, guy 25. Long, tall guy. And if you apply the same physical load for for, for both, like three series by uh, 25 repetitions, so one is not enough physical, another is too too much. So so this is. This model, uh, let's say, always tells that you should observe a growth rate because it's it's very different, very different for for, for different players. And the third model is uh, based on maturation status. So you can see it's fundamental movement skills and sport specific, uh, and, and then different uh, different uh, uh, physical abilities. So so in and is this prepubertal, circumpubertal, and postpubertal? Uh, uh, maturation status and, and, and on what you should focus. It's sensitive periods because uh, uh, to develop, for instance, explosive power, it's a certain period in the life when you can have a maximum, uh, let's say, growth. If you apply uh, uh, very right physical uh, load, uh, let's say, uh, so you, you, you can have uh, growth of uh, explosive power in this in this prepubertal, uh, let's say, much better than if you apply here. So, so here you should sport-specific uh, skills, uh, power, strength, hypertrophy, and so on. Uh, here you see this, and uh, so so three different models. And I will maybe will not overcrowd with this. Uh, what does it mean in general sport uh, development? Just to understand so the process of creating athletes and how the process can contribute to better performance very theoretical approach and um, then the the, the 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 purpose of of sport development you know to to create the the, the environment the circumstances to to make a larger selection pool for for national and international uh, teams what we have in Lithuania, we have very strong uh, uh, selection uh, process. Uh, I believe we are we almost not missing any talents in general because we have very strong observation, a lot of leagues, a lot of uh, clubs, and, and so on. I'll go very very uh, quickly here. Uh, of course, uh, to develop a high level uh, athlete require. Uh, Bases and, and all these environments and, and so on. So it's very clear. Um, without athletes, there is anything to develop without um, major uh, and effective uh, sport infrastructure. Of course, in, in Lithuania we have great infrastructure. So uh, so yeah, you are facing problems. What we uh, seen today and, and and so on. This is also very important factors. Of course, you you, you need more. Uh, and, and, and then, uh, okay, you come to the first uh, step in developing uh, uh, talents, in developing uh, or making effective uh, program, uh, youth basketball players development program, so, so from starting from the physical literacy. So this is uh, fundamental uh, movement skills. And um, for this, uh, I mean, uh, uh, we have to pay more attention in Lithuania, I'm, I'm talking about Lithuania, to this because we are jumping directly to the sport-specific uh, physical, uh, I mean skills, sport-specific skills, and we need more focus on the physical literacy. I mean, just motor uh, development of, of, of motor skills and, and, and so on. So this is our, our problem uh, as well. So uh, I will go more deeply uh, to, 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 to the 
two models uh, analysis. And uh, as I told, uh, DMSP is more uh, based on um, examination is the same, uh, let's say, clear that the LTAD model takes some of its elements. It's very related, by the way. Uh, just just uh, evaluate it in, in, in different uh, factors. So, okay, I, I explained uh, in, in general, as you can see, uh, DMSP uh, model, early specialization, characterized by high amount of deliberated uh, practices and low amount of deliberated play. Uh, and... Uh, uh, exclusive focus on training in only one sport. So this is purely Lithuanian uh, model, purely Lithuanian models, and 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 we we, we should more uh, include uh, sampling. Uh, we had a talk uh, here that uh, how to uh, get more kids in, in in basketball, and you have some national sports here. Uh, uh, called like ga 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 yeah, yeah Gaelic. So so I believe, uh, and it, it's played in different, uh, let's say, part of the year. So I believe, yeah, this could be a nice idea somehow to make multi-sport uh, concept and uh, like United States, especially uh, in the U USA, high schools, they have three different sports and, and this helps a lot to prepare, you know, body uh, to, to make a fundamental movement, skills development, and, and so on. So this, uh, let's say, model uh, based on chronological age. And yeah, when you are here, you, you are mainly focusing on some, uh, let's say, training uh, content, uh, then moving here. And, 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 and then uh, after 15 years old, you are fully uh, jumping into the specialization. Uh, okay, I explained this. Uh, here you can see uh, by, by different age, uh, let's say, uh, periods, uh, what, what focuses are here. I will not uh, go deeply inside, but, but of course you, you, you can get this presentation and I believe you, you know that uh, anyway. So uh, comparing early specialization model to the late specialization, uh, so these parts uh, more or less similar. Uh, just uh, in the late specialization, you put fundamentals. And, and here uh, we are, as a basketball federation, we are thinking different uh, projects, uh, especially in this youth age, uh, to somehow mix our training session with track and field, uh, let's say athletic uh, practices and uh, uh, for uh, uh, sport classes that we are creating in, in, different, in, in different high schools. So uh, morning practices are mainly track and field, uh, like physical preparation, specific uh, abilities development, and, and uh, let's say afternoon practices, basketball practice. So this way we are developing these fundamentals, and uh, fundamentals even, even in, in earlier, uh, I mean, from as young as, as possible, we are trying to uh, motivate uh, young uh, kids to, to, to make different sports, uh, to, to go to different sports. And uh, I, will, I will come back to Matas Buzelis uh, uh, situation. So uh, Matas was candidate to United States swimming national team. He was a swimmer. And if you see now his motion, so he's two, two meters, almost 10 centimeters, but, but playing as a playmaker. And, and I mean, because his coordination is really unique. Okay, take, uh, take Doncic or, or other uh, great talent you see, they have some, some very different uh, abilities, you know. So in that point, uh, we should understand the, the differences and similarities of all. And the third one is youth physical development model. Uh, it's it's uh, also train, uh, yeah, okay, it's it's approach to the training you describing how to training and maturation may I interact. It's it's by by maturation uh, status, what I already showed before. Uh, you can see in, 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 in this prepubertal, uh, let's say, uh, period, uh, fundamental movement skills, speed, power, strength, small, uh, hypertrophy uh, exercises, very, very little endurance. Here you, you go for speed, uh, power, strength mainly, and here already strength, hypertrophy, and, 
and all that. So this is very scientific, little sometimes boring information. Okay, about uh, sport uh, uh, talent, it's it's uh, is that an inherent uh, characteristic? I mean, what uh, talent you are bringing with with your mother and father genes and uh, what you are developing? So science more and more. Uh, saying that uh, talent can be created given a right set of circumstances. It means uh, appropriate uh, physical load and, and, and uh, environment, uh, support, uh, the level of talent in both players may be the same, but success will favor the one with better physical attributes. So, so this, is at, this is a sport, you need at, at, athlete body, athlete uh, you know, function, and, and that's how... Okay, uh, one more uh, research about... Uh, it's it's uh, Bloom, uh, that environment was a primary catalyst of developing a high ability environment. It's, it's mean what we are creating as organizers, as a coaches, and, and, and so on. And this is a very famous 10,000 hours uh, rule. Now, by the way, in some researches, it's decreased to the 6,000. It means that uh, you should spend this time becoming an elite uh, athlete in, in different sports. 6,000 from 6 to 10. It's, it's around 10 years. Uh, from, from, from 7 to 10 years, if you make a practice uh, free or, or, or four times per, per week and you count all the training practice, so 10,000 is enough to uh, develop in the right way, of course, uh, applying uh, appropriate right training load uh, to become an elite, elite player. Okay, summarization. Okay, one, one research here, uh, studies of multi-year basketball players' preparation. What is this about early specialization and, 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 and late uh, specialization? So you can see that it was one uh, research done, the relationship between uh, team final standings and individual technical skills, technical skills of youth players. So, uh, conclusion, strong relationship between offensive technical indicator and team final standing. So in youth competition, if you want to win, you just need to focus on technical training, but it doesn't mean it's the right way. Uh, mean uh, talking about long-term development because long-term development will you get elite play in, in the major competition in the men or women's uh, basketball so this uh, very clear if you want to win in the youth basketball you should focus on, uh, uh, on, on on technical it's early specialization and another uh, you know uh, study uh, about examine uh, the results of athletic performance test uh, in elite college basketball to, deter to determine importance of uh, test as reflected by playing time. So the study demonstrated important relationship between leg strength, vertical jump, speed, and agility on playing time. So it means that this player who were playing longer, who, who spent more time on the court, they were physically better prepared. So. So this, in the elite basketball, already you need uh, physical, uh, I mean, of course, you need to, 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 to know how to shoot and so on. But besides that, uh, it's a strong relationship, correlation with physical attributes. So what does it mean? Uh, here, under, uh, until, uh, under like 15, uh, what decide, what determine uh, winners? more technical preparedness, and here, of course, technical preparedness plus physical fitness. But if you want to get here strong physical fitness, especially uh, physical ability that uh, most important in basketball is uh, explosive power, agility, uh, speed, endurance, you should focus on development until 15 years old because this is a sensitive period when you can uh, have the biggest uh, growth, uh, the biggest results on applying uh, uh, physical load. So, but, but you see, you, you should a little bit sacrifice your results in the youth competition in order to have the player prepared for elite uh, basketball. So, so this, is, uh, this is something that we, we, we should understand. 
And I will present one uh, example of innovative training model. is one of the research. It's, it's basically done by, by, by me in, in my PhD. So uh, every coach can create own training models, for sure. J just you need to understand this general frame of, of long-term athlete development models. And, and then, you know, to search, uh, to explore, you know, some innovative ways. So I will show you one. Just one example, and, and you can, can use, uh, I mean, we are not talking about specific uh, uh, drills, plays, and so on. You can find on internet thousands of that, but uh, we are talking about philosophy, how to employ and, and, and apply. It. So, uh, okay, testing, modeling, load individualization, load optimization was criteria, uh, what I believe everybody should use, uh, every uh, coach. So uh, it was optimum physical load application effectiveness uh, for young basketball players. It was uh, done research with uh, under 16 boys team. And uh, this is criteria of physical load optimization, individual maximum uh, test. So it means, uh, okay, uh, if you're coming to the weightlifting room and uh, you have 12 players, how you determine uh, how many repetition and ex, uh, let's say sets uh, need to be done? So uh, and and with what uh, weight? So for instance, uh, pushing uh, uh, how you call that? Uh, pushing uh, w one time. Uh, uh, okay, take a squat. Squat with a with a weight. So if 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 player uh, can make one sit up with uh, sixty kilograms. So you need to, to give for development two-thirds of the, or 70% of the maximum uh, load. So, so, so it, it's called individual uh, maximum test. Uh, so it, one player can sit uh, with, uh, to make squat uh, with maybe 100 kilo, kilograms, another with 50 kilograms. And if you uh, tell to the team that, okay, now make uh, three times uh, five uh, squats was, I don't know, uh, 70 kilograms. So this, who, who, who can sit up with, with 50, one maximum test, it's too much. And this one uh, can, can make with 100, it's, it's too less. So, so this is about how we, uh, individual heart rate. So we did um, um, recovery test, just counting uh, during physical uh, preparation uh, camp. So for instance, uh, developing speed endurance, uh, you, you, you have, or especially speed, uh, the next repetition of run uh, should be uh, just fully recovered. So uh, you are counting heart rate, uh, so rest heart rate usually 60 uh, beats per minute. And you can see uh, if you start first run and uh, everybody coming back and, and you see the pulse rate, so and say the next run only when uh, pulse rate come back to the uh, 60 beats per minute. So one can start after 30 seconds and another can start only up after two minutes. So if you make, again, running all team after one minute, so one player developing speed and another developing speed endurance. So, so this is also criteria how to understand, optimize, individualize, um, uh, let's say, uh, physical load. Okay, muscle power very related to the uh, maximum test and structure of competition load and game uh, situation. So structure of competition load, uh, another uh, criteria, taking a basketball game structure. Uh, we also measure it. How long does it uh, uh, last first period, then two minutes break, second period, long break, uh, third and, and fourth uh, period and game situation, we were observing uh, what kind of situation usually prevail during basketball game. It means no free shots, uh, just you know, like that, without defense and so on. No, always uh, hard defense, uh, you know, pressing and so on, just creating uh, as, as close uh, situation to the game as possible. So by this, we try to analyze and you can see uh, we put heart rate, so practice heart rate and games. So it means it's, it's two different uh, environments for players. So if you practice in this and suddenly come to the game uh, environment, uh, you, 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 you haven't trained in that condition. So, so, so that's why 
uh, it's always, you know, need, uh, we, we, we always saying that <coughs> in track and field, if you train in 50 meters uh, run uh, distance and suddenly you need to run 500 meters, you never win. So, so in, in, in that, uh, you always should observe. Then heart rate, you, you can see here, a regular practice game. You see how, how it's different. And, and then we also try to make or, uh, you know, repeat somehow. This is first period, break, second period, long break, fourth period, uh, third period, and four, fourth period. So the prevailing physical load during practice does not conform to the activity during the... So just, just to understand. And we created model number one uh, based on structure of the game load. So the first quarter usually lasts 16 minutes, the second 19 minutes, then 15 minutes break, then 18 minutes. It's, it's as average. We were observing a lot of, lot of competition and measuring uh, uh, duration and so on. So what was, uh, we, we, we try to avoid long breaks during this first 16 minutes. Uh, let's say if we need to explain something, we just make during these two minutes. Here, we usually make free throws or, or some kind of explanation and, and so on, then the same here. So it was quite effective uh, impact on, on the preparation uh, for, for individual players because we did testing always. Every, every month, we, we did different tests and we saw even physical physical abilities, uh, okay, speed endurance mainly, because uh, they were facing quite, quite um, intensive. And the second model, we did structure the same, but always uh, game situation. So it was great. It was great. Uh, and uh, this is, as you can see uh, here, uh, you see, then we measure it by heart rate. Uh, it was much clo closer uh, modeled practices. Uh, we we call it mo modeled practice uh, physical load. One moment. Sorry? Sorry, oh. I'm having trouble with the connection. Okay, see. Okay, sorry. Uh, so, uh, you see, we, we created a model that is much closer by by content to the game and 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 then okay model one it was uh, improvement significantly speed endurance and special endurance what you need during basketball uh, game and 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 the model two uh, was a uh, technical preparedness as well speed so so it was significant it, it's it's an example of training models what you can uh, create and Okay, dear friends, I will not overcrowd more you. Uh, maybe just um, quickly, I will show what we gonna do and, and uh, what we are doing usually. So uh, we are proposing such partnership and today we, we had signed uh, MOU with the Federation of Northern Ireland and uh, we will focus on, on such uh, activities uh, uh, together, of course, it's it's opportunity for both of us and, and uh, to help local community and to develop uh, to develop our uh, let's say uh, globalize our activity and so on. So so it, it's what what we are ready to start tomorrow. So coach education and we we we, we opened it in uh, just a month ago. We 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 launched a course in Clayborough University uh, for. Uh, you know, basketball coaches, uh, education, specialization in, 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 in basketball coaching. coaching. Uh, so really, I'm inviting everybody to join because it's very flexible uh, uh, study format. Uh, during summertime, you, you, you got contact learning and, and during the entire year, it's online, mainly online. And uh, we are looking for the opportunity to send lectors uh, here uh, to, to Northern Ireland if we get uh, more than 12 uh, students, so you don't need, even need to go uh, uh, to Lithuania. Uh, development plans for youth. A lot of what, what we are already doing with, with different basketball federations and that we are hosting uh, events in Asia. We are bringing 
three to five lectors and, and three to five days we are delivering uh, courses and, and uh, we're doing testing. Uh, just uh, uh, showing this, uh, let's say, testing the methodics and, and, and different uh, stuff. Of course, coaches education strategy, uh, international opportunities, exchanges. I'm, I'm sure you, you, will, you will get uh, quite soon um, Lithuanian teams coming here. With China, we did an uh, interesting uh, project. I mean, what we uh, talked uh, during uh, this presentation, that you should create environment uh, which uh, help uh, youth players to grow. So, so, so China didn't manage to, to create this environment in, in China, so they sent most talented kids to Lithuania. I, I was uh, head of the program, uh, and uh, I mean, this, I will tell you, situation. These guys, I mean, we, we're dreaming about such bodies, such hates, and so on. We went to China to, to make a selection uh, in different towns, and we got unbelievable physically prepared talents. Uh, but uh, I'm calling, we got great hardware, uh, but without software, you know? So, so in Lithuania, our task were to put this knowledge. Uh, the bodies were incredible, but they were losing to the C division teams in Lithuania. In two years, they, they, they started to beat first division teams in, uh, of Lithuania, just, just spending uh, time in the right environment. And, and uh, of course, the budget that they paid is it, huge, and we could hire uh, leading Lithuanian coaches and so on, but it's just showing that everything is possible. So, so these international opportunities, I believe, you should mix as much as possible activities uh, with Lithuania. Finland did it uh, in, in the great way. Uh, I told uh, Henrik Detman, uh, he, he, he former uh, Finnish national team uh, coach, he just made a very close synergy between national team of uh, Finland and Lithuania. All national camps uh, were uh, organized in Lithuania in the cheapest place. Uh, really without uh, some luxury condition and so on. But the most important, they played against. They, they, they were losing to Lithuania a lot and, and, and were, you know, learning, learning, learning. So in 10 years, they, from uh, FIBA rating 82nd place, went to uh, 20 play. And now, uh, all of them, uh, I believe, at least boys teams playing in the A divisions. And, and uh, you know, the national team, uh, succeeding now in all the competition and the biggest quantity of fans, that following team in the Europe is fin Finnish. Uh, around 10,000 uh, fans following their team in ice hockey, uh, in ice hockey countries. So never can dream about this. And when I'm talking uh, with, to, 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 Detman, to Henrik Detman, he says, this is a, the, the best investment for us. And okay, comparing Finnish prices and Lufthansa, so they even s saved a lot of money because uh, you know to organize camps in Finland, it's it's quite expensive. So so this is this is what we are ready, and 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 uh, we, we will start uh, several uh, several uh, project uh, very soon, and and I'm sure uh, we'll have a lot of a lot of uh, great time, you know, working together. So this is what I want to tell, uh, information about um, this contact uh, Rolandas uh, will have, uh, connection as well. So just let me know what else uh, we can uh, do for you. And, and as a basketball federation, as a basketball coach association, uh, we are ready to, to, you know, to, to intensive cooperation. So thank you very much. Thank you. Can, can we have a, a light here? Is it possible? Uh, okay. Is it possible to get? Okay. So, so uh, I will use this opportunity. You know, we, we, we brought a lot of... Uh, uh, Diploma of Gratitudes and, and so on for, for many uh, people who are uh, helping, you know, our local basketball community and so on. But uh, this visit is because uh, Rolandas invited us and we really appreciate uh, your, as a local community activity and especially uh, Rolandas initiative. He doesn't know this, but uh, Lithuanian Basketball Federation uh, nominate his for the uh, medal and uh, for the contribution of Lithuanian 
basketball, and this I want to give in front of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Thank you. So what? We have a break. Question. Ah, oh, yeah. Question or, or or remarks? Yeah, please. So a couple of questions. When you do the ratings, you didn't mention three x three. Do you rate how you perform in three x three tournaments? Yeah, three on three. Uh, it's still you know something that we are discovering. Honestly, yeah, we, we are in very good position. Three on three, we are second in the world, uh, only Serbia. But, uh, you know, uh, three on three is still uh, the, the, the kind of sport which, which is very good for some countries. But uh, talking uh, very openly, we still have a conflict, <coughs> three on three and five on five uh, formats. And, uh, for instance, letting players to go to the... Uh, master uh, or, or, or challengers or, or, or this club competition, club free on free competition, we always uh, have an issue between clubs and, and, and this um, uh, organizer on free on free. We also have different organizations, free on free association uh, running, uh, the, but of course they don't have separate players. They take always from five on five. And, and, and then, you know, when five on five uh, teams and clubs starting to ask, okay, why we, we should give, because this is very contact uh, kind of uh, basketball, a lot of injuries and so on. This is reality. And um, we are happy and, and uh, we are striving to be in Olympic Games with uh, at least two teams, five on five men's and three on three. And, and women's uh, three on three in the fourth place in the world. But it's because five on five strong. So uh, we want to separate. And uh, uh, yeah, we have different feelings, uh, especially in youth basketball. I'll tell you, uh, for instance, small towns. Uh, because now in Lithuania, three on three and five on five in, in the, the same level, in, the, in, in, the, in categories for basketball coaches, you know, it's the same way to win three on three or, or, or five on five. But you cannot compare what does it mean to win the first place in Lithuania, three on three and five on five. Five on five is much harder, it's way harder. So, so uh, and, and you know what we noticed is that some of the municipalities they choose free on free as uh, the much uh, so easy way uh, to 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 develop basketball, and this is not good trend for us, because they are not organizing five on five at all. They're just choosing free on free, and uh, five on five anyway. Uh, yeah, with all respect to free on free, it's never uh, or or okay long time to go to, to become the same level uh, popularity of five on five. So, yeah, I didn't mention it because, yeah, it's, it's may, maybe not the main driving factor of Lithuanian ba basketball, but it's, yeah, we are good in that. But still trying to understand which way uh, we should go. We are trying to establish separate clubs, five on five, just regarded to develop three on three. It means that uh, players uh, that represent uh, in club competition and in national team competition through and free can go only from these clubs. Uh, and, and then they don't have, uh, let's say, too high expectation in five-on-five -five basketball. And, 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 and this way maybe we don't want to have this conflict because in Lithuania it's, it's really sensitive uh, situation between uh, these uh, two basketball kinds, I will tell you. But yeah, we are happy. And, and it, it, it has some really clear advantages, for instance, uh, individual uh, skills development. So yeah, it's, it's, you, can, you, you get free and free much more responsibility. You are not uh, standing in, only in the corner and waiting once or twice per game. So, so yeah, it's, it, it is. But, but yeah, still need to find a way how to develop this, uh, let's say, parallel to the basketball kind of sport. But, but for uh, your situation, I believe it's perfect. And, and uh, you know, Mongolia, one of the leading countries in the uh, five on, uh, free on free, by the way. And this is issue. As you know, China starting to buy uh, <coughs> players because the system is that clubs competition earn points for the national team competition. And this start and even FIBA reacted very, very hardly. 
because China can buy all three on three clubs in general. And so, yeah, it's, it's an issue and, and we'll see. But we are happy. We, we are happy and we very hope to, to be in the Olympic Games. Three. One more question, Mr. Uh, the most important one was actually about uh, the university in Klaipeda. Uh, when is that starting? Is that starting in June? Yeah, registration in June, uh, starting in September, but uh, basically contact <coughs> learning hours uh, only in, uh, in, in next, next uh, summer. But uh, all IBU courses will be counted as uh, informal learning. So you guys, you did... Uh, yes, yes, yes. So, so yeah. informal learning will be... If you are working as uh, coaches, so, so a lot of basketball specialization subjects will be just, uh, uh, just counted as, okay, as so done as done, and, and for, for professional players as well. So it's, it's really very flexible uh, So study. we get to IBU, we can email you or we can uh, Rolandas? Yeah, I mean, uh, no, yeah, through Rolandas or, or directly, uh, but uh, for Klaipeda University registration, you need to apply directly. directly. But, to, but to uh, uh, Klaipeda University, you can find all, all, all contacts, but uh, specialization, uh, uh, let's say, implemented or delivered by IBU, people, professors. Yeah, because, because there is like, if we look and start looking for the future, like uh, not, not our under 18, under 17 yeah. boys, uh, they're going to go to professional. We want to, we need to build the coaches as well. Yeah. We want yeah. to send to young players to start giving him career in the co co coaching. Great, great, great. That's why it's a huge, uh, huge problem and big lack of coaches in the world. Absolutely. Uh, we can, we, we have now f over 400 uh, coaches in Lithuania, licensed coaches, so I know 100 can easily go to China uh, just awesome. tomorrow, uh, 50 to Taiwan, and, and uh, so, so this is the most desirable uh, position now, uh, IT and basketball coaches in Lithuania, so I mean just uh, as an export of our know-how, so we are happy with that, so that's why even in, in Lithuania we, we, we have a lack of, of coaches, especially in, in small towns and, and so on, so yeah, education is everything. So in that point, uh, we are trying to create uh, most uh, appropriate uh, study formats that uh, possible to, to, to get everyone. Yeah, please. Given that basketball is early specialization in Lithuania, on average, how many hours do you... Oh, coach, you, you, you can say it. Uh, I mean, in kindergarten, they, they practice uh, three times per week, uh, how usually. How Sorry? Uh, how, long how long? One hour and a half. Usually, from one hour to one hour. Kindergarten, more or less twice, 45 minutes each, but it's not, it's only, let's say, pretend basketball. It's really like having fun games and, okay, with the, with the ball looking like a basketball and with the hoop, but it's more getting the kids to enjoy basketball. So most of the academies who start kindergarten, it's twice per week, 45 minutes each, in the, in the, in the, after lunch, in the midday. Before they before they go home, grade one on average probably between two and three times per week, and then grade primary one, prim let's primary say, primary school primary school grade yeah. one. Let's say seven year olds go between two and three times, not probably never more than three times per week. Grade let's say eight nine ten, it's already four times per week on average nationwide, and then it increases as as they get older. It's also should count uh, should be counted the number of games, and then this. So, so 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 I mean we counting games number per year, so sometimes I know, twelve years uh, boys playing, forty, fifty sometimes to tell. Uh, the, the, we spoke about this with uh, with some guys already. Lithuania has I think one of the kind. Uh, children's this basketball league. It's nationwide. It, it's I have not I've traveled many many different countries, many places, world played everywhere. Such a system doesn't exist anywhere else. If you speak with the coaches, even neighboring countries in Lithuania, let's say some coach in Latvia or Estonia or Poland says I have a good team. The problem is I get four or five good games per season. Good games. In Lithuania we sit down and we it's never ending conflict. My, play, my best players playing too many competitive games. The, where, the, where, let's say, the two minutes left in the game, you don't know the, which team is going to win. This kind of uh, situations. So Lithuania is very, very unique in that way. That uh, one, of, one of the things that I organized, like some abroad teams would come in and have a, like a 
traveling week, played three games in Vilnius, one day off, traveled by train to Kaunas, and then three games in Kaunas. And this six, seven days would be, for them, uh, counting like a season in Estonia, for example. Just what they, what, what they accomplished in this one week in a competition sense. So Lithuania is unique and, and, and it, 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 amount of games, I have a 10 year old son, uh, he played in, uh, I should say, okay, with the, in three different leagues, one is City League, one is National League, etc. He is already, he joined the team in uh, November because that's why we returned home from my previous job. So from November till now he played, the, I counted, just under 40 teams already. Another different levels. No, at his level, at his competitive level, okay, probably half of the games he won, half of the games he lost. Uh, but uh, in all the games, the coach is very smart, very intelligent, so he uses every player plays about half of the game. So for you, easy to imagine that, okay, November, December, now it's end of April, so six months he played, not quite 40 yet, but definitely over like 35 plus games per season where he played half of the game at least in each one of those competitions and half won, half lost. So, so it's competitive all the time. So there isn't a problem with retention. There's, is there a strong retention of players so players continue to play and don't drop out? No, I mean, it, it, competition was one of the reasons they stay in basketball. We, we should tell also because it's, it's exciting for, for them. The, the coaches will say, no. if we don't have games, that's when we start losing the yeah, games. Yeah, yeah, so. so like one of, the, one of the tricks we used, uh, let's say, at the younger, younger ages, the finals, I worked in this, I, I coached the teams every single age group through, the, through this uh, youth league, so under 12 until under 18. So like I know all the, all the, all the system, how it works, every nuance. So let's say that the um, uh, finals of under 13 happen end of April. But the school year ends more or less in the mid-June. So you got about six, seven weeks at the end of the season. And the, the, the trick that all the guys taught me, okay, as announced around Easter time that there's a big tournament in mid-June. Find the tournament, say there is a tournament, and then there is a reason to prepare for the tournament, have some friendly games and continue working so, so that, so that basketball, school, basketball learning year lasts 10 months, not, uh, not 8, not 7. Like, this, this is a little trick that we would, we would come up with. And I had three different groups and I said, okay, this is three different tournaments. And this is where we're going and... <laughs> yeah, but this environment in which they are growing, you know, and maturing as a, as a players, uh, all this game situation and I mean, all the all always tense, you know. To, 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 so this is this is why we are developing and producing these players. So so we are not complaining in general, but uh, too big uh, workload, uh, you know, driving to injuries and uh, especially in uh, in girls basketball uh, in last five years, I believe. We, we, we lost uh, some, some five very promising players because of very hard injuries. Uh, it's, it's especially in girls, overtraining. It's, it's a big problem because some girls playing for two national teams, uh, for two age groups and, and, and different uh, stuff. So, so that's why we, we are trying to control it. But OK, every club decide by themselves. Now we put the uh, regulation uh, in, in basketball federation that uh, if it's over 30 uh, games, you should get kind of permission uh, to, to from from basketball federation uh, because some coaches putting girls in uh, even three different uh, divisions. But some, you know, we have some always ex exclusions, and uh, we see if, if if player plays very few minutes and so on, and it's good to play in the third division. So we are talking to the coach, and and we see it's if if it's safe, we we allowing, but. In girls basketball, even bigger problem. Uh, so. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Tom, I just want to ask Tom, is, uh, so if the, you recommended like uh, for the kids uh, to not give it more than four trainings a week, or depends uh, even from the age I, to 12, 13, that age, our boys they train five days a week and one day a game. It doesn't matter what, what age, from six to No, I have all data, what is the recommendation for, for each age group. So I, I, I will show you. This is, uh, you know, it, it depends on how many games you, you play. One game, you told, yeah? One game. 
I mean, this, this is good. If uh, what what age? It's how old? Uh, basically, from uh, under under nineteen uh, to under eighteen. Under nine and to seven teams. Seven team. Okay. So. So it's it's yeah more or less it's increasing five five games per per year in each age group, starting from twenty and and then going up and up and up. So 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 I'll 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 send you this information. I mean, but you you should, you know how we observing uh, uh, overloading, uh, by, by maximum test. Uh, so if for instance one uh, maximum jump, you see uh, the height, and if if the the height drop by 10%, uh, you need to give a, a recovery, you know. Uh, so this is physiological observation. Uh, How many tests do you uh, do per year? Uh, every, every month. Every month. Yes, but uh, this quick test uh, by jumping, and uh, if it's overtraining, the first indices are dropped is explosive power. Explosive power reflect uh, very, very, very well. So, so you can do it even every day. If you have this uh, platform, or, or there are a lot of now tools, even uh, apps, you know, uh, yeah. with which you can measure. But the best is, uh, you know, platform. If, if you yeah, got it, so 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 I, I know even in in women's or, or men's national teams, they doing this test uh, to uh, monitor overloading. So so that's uh, when it's drop, you get give a more easy physical load. So, so. But in general, I don't think it's bad for you. To, to, for, for, for five, four, five, it's, it's, it's what we have in Lithuania. The, 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 the good answer, this is the philosophical question. Yeah. Basketball is so diverse that you can have two hours training and then, then there's almost very minimal physical load. If it's a lot of stationary or some, some sh form shooting, or it's, it really depends on the intensity of the practice. Yeah. Uh, for us, we, 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 you know, you cannot take a thousand shots per day and then you're a shooter. It's much better to take a hundred shots seven days in a row and you improve in that week much longer. With 700 shots, you improve much more than 1,000 shots in one day. So there is that aspect of, of nuance. There is another, another aspect, um, uh, I think it's coming from Spain. In Spain, they say, okay, our certain club, certain, certain location, I, I cannot say that it's the whole country, but they speak that uh, our players are tired from basketball, just mentally exhausted uh, from basketball, and they choose to do three-hour training. Okay, one one hour of some specific uh, physical skills. The coach really practices them specifically. Half an hour very light uh, technical skills development, and then okay, one hour plus like real basketball practice. And they give always the next day off, so you never have two days in a row of basketball. And then you, you really recharge, you, your, your body really recovers, and then you come in on the third day, and then you're ready to do three hours again. This is the, the, the opposite philosophy. And where the middle is, it just really depends on the level of the team, the, the, let's say their abilities, uh, let's say their potential evaluation, where, where the progression would go. So in under 16, 17, 18, I chose to have two days off per week. Everybody had absolutely have two days off per week, no matter what. But the, the, the hours per practice from under 16 increased in under 17, increased in under 18. Just how I developed, when, when do we have a special day for physical preparation only uh, for hour and a half and that's it. Or I do three days, 45 minutes, and then it's don't, have, don't dedicate one physical preparation day. It's, it's just it, it really depending uh, on the coach. So, I don't like to answer the question, how many practices per week? What is the load? What is the intensity weekly? Mm -hmm. Then that, that, okay, then, then in the end, okay, three times three is nine. One and a half times five is also nine. And it just depends how you, how, how you choose what your gym availability or other things factor in in these nuances. It depends if we don't have a gym, uh, and it's very hard with that. And uh, our boys, like uh, they, we we coaching them like uh, once or two days per week physically, like you know. Physical but, preparation. Uh, phys yeah, but hard physically, like you know. It's, but we do that every week. Will you recommend to keep going that or or change? Yeah, that? I, I worked in Montreal's academy for three seasons. We had an amazing, amazing coach uh, who 
from from basketball coach's perspective, I can really say, okay, two weekends we have easy game, on the third weekend it's gonna be really, really test for us. Okay, two, in three practices that you have, it was always on Tuesday. So three Tuesdays, can you make sure that they run and jump the most on the on the three weeks from now? And he would really, really develop. How many of us speak and measure the uh, the, the height of the explosive power and then evaluate what kind of load to prepare. This guy had the eye test amazing. I mean, my guys are really tired. I think like maybe you should go easy. They start running and within three minutes says, Tom, you're wrong. I'm sorry, but you're wrong. Now we're going hard today. I can see from their body language that it, he has his nuances, his eye test because he's extremely experienced for many, many years. So those those factors really play in. But in Martial Arts Academy, we had one physical preparation coach. He took the main teams, that they say the top talent teams, each team had one, one day with him, and that was it. Don't touch it, don't tell me anything, don't, don't, don't discuss with me, tell me when you want them to be at their max, and don't tell me anything what to do. I, I wouldn't <coughs> judge, but we had, and it worked, once per week, and then the, they say the 12 and the 13 and the 14 worked perfectly fine. And it was actually, it was not nothing. Like his, 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 his work, what he did, was extremely evident. Extremely evident, you can really measure by testing and see all the things the, the agility, the speed, the coordination. He would improve those things. The practices were fun, and okay, it's one specific guy that's doing a great job. But once per week at that age uh, is sufficient if done properly, done efficiently. Oh, even, even, even uh, several uh, physical training, but you, you say that you, you do it hardly, but it depends what uh, physical ability you are developing. So if you are developing explosive power, so in that uh, one of the most important components is the rest and uh, you know full uh, recovery let's say to the next uh, exercise and so on so it, it's short and uh, you know uh, one of the best i think uh, experts in lithuania bless him he's passed away Stanislavitis. i have these programs uh, I, I used it so i will share with you know, with rolandas you, you you will share with everybody you will see uh, i mean uh, training explosive power, it's, it's, it's really short uh, trainings and uh, intensive, but short intensity, up to four seconds uh, exercise and long rest. So, so in that, uh, the player, uh, he doesn't feel tired, but if you measure indices, it is go up uh, very, very well. Please, I, yeah, I just wanted to ask a question around, so a lot of this is, is about development. But when do you guys introduce um, like club or school systems? So, for example, do you even do that in Lithuania? So, if you look at the NCAA, they'll have like one school plays this style of basketball. Um, but at underage level, do you teach that? You, you mean uh, how we defensive system? Defensive system. Oh, yeah. Ah, so tactical. You that early, um, or is that a case of like whatever you? We had this limitation. Yeah. I, yeah. Can I elaborate a little bit? Yeah. It, it's uh, let's say I worked at the Elite Academy, number one academy in, in Lithuania, Marcinonis Basketball Academy, that doesn't exist anymore. And we have uh, okay, out of seven championships, five first places. So this is the, 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 the best year of the academy. And in there we would have this discussion. Exactly this. Should we play the same way? Should we not play the same way? When should we introduce something else or, or, or other things and like really really open discussion with extremely smart established coaches and etc etc and one team had uh, three big guys and i had no no big guys and, I, and we sit down and say okay you do you i do me we understand what uh, I, I like to call it like a recipe sure. if you know what ingredients are necessary to cook a meal uh, or achieve a victory in the game or develop a player so you concentrate on, 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 on these specific uh, ingredients and then, then the system becomes secondary. If the big guy is a little bit later developing, so you slow down the guards and really develop. The, the best example is Thomas Masuris and John Gis Jr. Uh, they had big guys, they concentrated on the big guys and the guard wants to run. And you always slow him down because you are developing big guys and from that program came out a number of big guys who were playing great levels everywhere and even, we have too many centers in Lithuania right now it's, it's, it's a fact like the, the, the center that will start a national team under normal circumstances he's not even a candidate he's like seventh best center in Lithuania uh, if you don't have a big guy then you tell every 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 guard like let's say every player say okay 
this, this train is going fast. And if you're not jumping on that train, the train will leave you and you'll go to another team. And this, this, this team is developing at, 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 at a different level. So there is no uh, clear answer, should we run this way or that way? Even in one academy, difference in age is one year. And we will sit down and say, okay, my system doesn't work for you. And your system wouldn't really benefit anything for my guys. So no, we, we, we don't make this recommendation, like clear how, how to play. We, we rely on every coach understanding, philosophy, and, and I mean, uh, I believe, yeah, coach decide uh, the way he plays and, and so on. So, uh, yeah, you, you've seen these uh, kind of frames in what we are living and, and every coach decide on himself. Yes, please. Do you have uh, your international programs? Are the international players in the one academy? Or how, how does the international program players come together? International or national? International. So playing in Europe in, for teams that are playing in European competitions. For men's, you mean? For women. Uh, yeah, for, for men's. For, for men. Yeah, yeah. So, so we, we have national team program. And every year we, we simply invite. Uh, we, we have, okay, we, you know, by Windows uh, now, FIBA Windows, uh, they have different system. So we have qualification uh, during the uh, club uh, season, so we cannot get player from NBA, from, from EuroLeague. So, uh, okay, we, we were skeptic very much about these uh, changes of calendar, but okay, we found how to use it in our benefits because uh, we got a uh, number of, of players that, that were basically second level players, but with this responsibility coming to the national team, they must qualify. They, they know if, if Lithuania will not qualify to the major competition, I mean, it was, will be a big shame for them, for everybody. So, so now, Kurin Jargilis, if our colleagues know, if you take Dimsha, if you take Birutis, if you take Butkevichus, uh, others. So they got this confidence during the national team windows uh, games. And we qualify to, to Eurobasket, we qualify to uh, World Cup, and then hopefully we qualify to Olympic game and so on. So we have really large number of players and uh, okay this year we'll see how we'll compose national team but we have at least 20 players that can equally pretend to best 12. So in that every uh, summer we, we, we get everybody coming back and you know for, for players to, to be in a national team roster is a good tra trademark uh, and I mean it's uh, you know for uh, getting contract and, and for agents to, to sell players to the club is is, is very strong argument because he was in so we don't have big problems of, of not coming. And what about youth? Like your under eighteens one so how often were that group together? Uh, every every year. Every every year for, for five to six weeks. P preparation camp and uh, yeah. That's, that's usual, but I mean, uh, okay, starting from under 16, when they get, uh, no, we, 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 we got like under, fif, under 15, uh, AGBL league, uh, you, Baltic, you, Cup. Baltic Cup and so on. Yeah, S basically it starts from under 14 and then under 16, the Eurobaskets, and the 16, under 18, under 20, and the national team. Yeah, it's, it's like this. Okay, yes, so thank you.